Boom, baby. What's up, everybody? It's the overachievers. Overachievers? Overachievers. Over, <laughs> over, a, over a Biebers. Over, over a, the Chover. A, okay. Uh, overachievers Gaming Podcast. Uh, it's your boys. You know them. You love them. Is that third person? Uh, uh, it's me, Dami, Ash and Strami. And you, I don't know what I'm doing. I am Charlie, <laughs> a.k.a. Vash. How's it going, Dom? It's good, man. It's good, man. Uh, but you know what else is good? Pastrami. Besides Pastrami is you can find us on Instagram at OG.podcast. Ah, uh, yeah, you like that, right? OG.podcast on the Twitter at OverachieversP. Check us out on the website at beingoverachiever.com. Oh, my God. What cheaper? Why do I keep doing this? <laughs> the website, beingoverachiever.com. Don't forget to check out our Patreon. We love and we love y'all, and thank you so much for our support. Uh, Matt, people hitting us up on that last episode, really fun Marvel Strike Force. If you haven't you haven't peeped that, please peep it. Uh, Casino is a, a a literal fountain of information on that game. And re- after re listening to it, Charlie, he totally dropped he totally dropped on us with rescue. It was so funny. It was yeah. so funny. Hundred percent. He's like, I'm gonna need someone to rescue me on this. That <laughs> 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 that was funny as shit. Uh, really yeah. fun episode. Really fun shit. But um, yeah, man, I'm good. I got tattooed last night. Had a 9 p.m. session. Three hours of shading in my armpit and elbow, which was just absolutely terrible. Um, what time did you get home last night? You called me at like, what was it like 10:30? Yeah, I was on my way home from work. Uh, we had a 15 and a half hour day on Thursday, Jeez, so that dude. fucking sucked. And Friday was our sixth day because we had worked on Mother's Day on the Sunday. So but yeah, you told me about that. Uh, what was that about? To diverge real quick before we get into the meat of we have a lot of meat to talk about, y'all. So without going into too much, just due to spoilers for the show, there's a certain actor whose schedule we had to work around, and so he or she was only available around the first sure. last his or her last day on Sunday. Mm-hmm. So uh, we just had to, uh, you know, get it done. That's yeah. what happens sometimes. That's what happens. So, but, so oh. I've just been really tired and cranky all week. It's been great. Uh, understandably so. Hopefully you get get some rest this weekend. I'm I'm like I could feel myself getting sick. Mallory's sick as shit. I got tattooed. It's like all of the boiling center for what's going to be a bad sickness for the week. I'm a wedding next week in North Carolina. I can't wait to fly to North Carolina. Uh, oh, that sounds great. But you know who I saw last night? Even another divergence, funny enough. I saw Brooks Lockwood. Oh, really? He, How's he, he was, doing? He, good. He was at this wedding. His wife has known uh, the bride since they were eight. It was just the most random thing. Of, it was very random and funny. Uh, but anyway, let's let's get into some shit. Is there anything you want to talk about first? Uh, so the only thing that I want to talk about is some follow up. I want to say thank you to everyone for, you know, being a part of this and coming in and um, hanging out with us on yeah. the last episode. I know you said it, we had over a 600 downloads on the last episode. So I want to say thank the you to all the new listeners. Yeah, it's still. great. It's fantastic. I hope you guys enjoy it. And there's been a lot of requests for us to make a MSF podcast. That is, uh, not going to, not going to spoil anything. It's kind of TBD. May or it may or may not happen you have, based you on have no chill. Things. I have no chill. No. <laughs> you have no chill. It might happen. I don't know. It, it's probably gonna happen. Wink. I don't, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. It's a, it all depends on uh, something happening tomorrow for me. So whether or not that goes well. So I think it, I need to get to level seventy first if I were to ever do anything like that. I need to stop being well, a little baby. I think I think it's a I think it would be a good kind of like. Uh, difference you know so me being a little higher up and you kind of starting out because it'll be catering to some you know different listeners and different kind of play yeah. styles well you know? I, i'm getting i'm going it's going a lot faster since i joined um mcu legends well what, i'm specific which which one i am mcu legion i think legion yes there's a whole how many how many like subdivisions of this clan mcu avengers sorry uh i think there are legends too though right how many I don't remember, but there's there's a there's a bunch of us. Uh, we are MCU Hydra. Is what Hydra, we are. Ooh. so hail hail Hydra, hail Hydra. Uh, yeah. yeah, since I joined this clan, it's been it's been the best. These dudes have been great to me. Uh, I'm just getting so many so many fucking um, mostly abil- mostly it's mostly T4 ability mats. Like that that's what's been crush. My defenders team are strong as fuck now. But what, what yeah. I'm finding is slow. We're, we're going to talk about Marvel Strike first for a second now. What I'm finding is just so a, slow are just stars, man. Yeah, it's the not grind. A, not it's even the hard just part. red stars. Just like regular stars besides red Like it's it's like I can't get them fast enough. I, a lot of my, you know, my, my defenders right now, most of them are three. But Daredevil and Luke Cage are four. 
So that's at least nice. But um, yeah, so your strategy should be like, yeah, to keep working on your defenders for that. Yeah. And for uh, you should focus uh, all you should start to focus on arena if you haven't already. Yeah, I've been trying to try do. Yeah, yeah. And use your arena uh, tokens or what your arena credits on mm -hmm. uh, Luke Cage and get him on and get him up as much as possible. So right. that's, oh, that's what a you good should point. Be. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Luke Cage and Daredevil, I think, are in arena, and then there's you know Jessica Jones has a, a node, as well as Iron Fist has a node, and then mm -hmm. Punisher has a node. So it's just a matter of just like you know, you have a Pumping you have it. resets at noon, uh, or you have free energy at noon, six o'clock, and nine o'clock Eastern. Remember so that. It's just a matter of just just a matter of getting in there and uh, you know refreshing and getting your nodes and getting things up. So it's like. It sucks, but it's the it's the power grind, you know. It's, it's the just, grind. You have to get there. It's the grind, and you know, I think that, and this is going to lead into the division too. Uh, the grind is, and I, it's good that we we're talking about the grind. A lot of people right now are. I don't know how your feelings are, Charlie, but a lot of people are, are upset console players in regards to the new raid that just came out in the division two, and that's too hard. It's not possible. You know, I, I don't know if you watch. I watched Marco Style stream. The PC raid, they they were for world's first. They did it in five hours. Uh, raid looks super fun. It looks cool as shit. There's a lot going on. It like is definitely, it's definitely fucking tough looking. It looks like a real raid, not like you know the strikes they've been doing in the previous one, which were tough, but they were just mostly time sensitive or not time sensitive, but time constraining because you're shooting at a fucking dude with a bunch of armor or a truck for like three hours, you know, whatever. This raid has a lot going on, you know, and. A lot of people are bummed because people are going in there at 500 plus gear score on console and they're not they're not doing it and i i get maybe the disconnect there is you know maybe it's a little harder on console compared to pc you have a little bit faster reaction time on pc whatever blah 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 yeah more frames yeah more fr more frames too which is actually huge for bullets um and and shooting and killing and shit but also like yeah maybe maybe they do need to uh I don't want to say nerf the raid on console a little bit, but I, I just, I think that we as gamers and a culture have kind of become too impatient in regards to like content and things we can do when something new drops or whatever. You shouldn't be able to complete the raid on day one. You shouldn't be able no. to. And I don't know if that's because I come from, you know, playing MMOs when I was like younger and stuff like that. You were lucky if you even saw the fucking doors that opened up to the raid back in like you know in, in old in older mmos i play like you were lucky if you were even like gifted to be around other teams that were good enough to go into the raid you know yeah and 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 I, someone this dude on reddit posted a very funny post like uh he did like you know the bane line like you were you were merely born in the dark or uh, you were, you were merely um uh was adopted by the dark and I was born to it whatever the fuck it was but yeah, like yeah. in regards to, he put, wrote posts this long rant on like fucking chill you're going to get there you're going to you're going to have to grind to get there and even when you do get there it's still going to be fucking tough and i think that we if you if you can't do everything that a new patch or a new game or whatever happens at night. And I'm not talking about time gated things. I'm talking about like you being strong enough to do it. People are just like up in arms and like the, the division two subreddit right now. And maybe some of it's warranted. I'm sure, I'm sure some of it is, but like, yo, you're not supposed to clear a fucking full raid immediately. That's just not, you're supposed, it's supposed to be hard. It's supposed to be. And maybe there are some aspects that are like overly hard, especially like if there is like a definitive, like that's a problem too. If someone on PC finished it and someone on console didn't, so that's already like a, a fucking mm -hmm. argument point, you know. I just think PC we master race, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I but say that as I uh, as I'm a console player, <laughs> <laughs> but I think I think we need to chill. I think we need to learn some patience. I think we're especially. I think we're overly critical, hundred percent in in our in the fandom world, and you see this also with like movies, TVs, you know, like. Nothing is ever good enough. A move. There's always like you know either with Star Wars drops or Game of Thrones drops or Marvel drops. And like there's like three thousand like dissertation style level like critiques from dudes on fucking Facebook that have never you know either worked on a movie before or ever written before, but somehow they know how they should have done it. Um, you know. Yeah. So I, I think we I think we, I think we need to fucking chill. We need to fucking chill. 
Yeah, I, I definitely agree. Definitely need like people don't understand that like it takes you know months and months and months, if not years, to create these things. And that if you're gonna if, if somebody goes and finishes it day one, they're gonna be like, okay, where's the next one? And be like, motherfucker, you know how long that took to do? Yeah, and like, figure that, that like, out. Obviously, and think Marco about. and his team finishing it was a freak of nature kind of thing. They are they're like they're professional division players. Yeah. Like I hope they would finish it in a day. I don't hope. I don't like who am I? Who are any, any of the ca- like other players? Even if you're like five fifteen, what the fuck ever. It's still supposed to be fucking hard. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like it's the same with like the Destiny. I like that they went the kind of Destiny style with the with the encounters being like having mechanics as opposed to just being a you know like you said earlier like a tank bullet that you have to blow shit. All yeah, 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 bullet sponge shit. Like it makes it interesting. You know, it's like it a, does. It does, man. I love the Division One, but the the strikes were fucking boring. They were boring yeah, as fuck. You just shot sucked. shit for a while. Cursions, yeah. The only fun one I thought was the one of the like quote unquote newer ones they had, where the air, anti aircraft guns were shooting down all the. Uh, I uh, I forgot who stole the anti aircraft guns or something like that. It might have been Falcon right. Lost, where they're shooting down all the helicopters going into the the dark zone. Yeah. And you had to like bring the batteries to uh, the stations to like recharge some shit, and then you had yeah. I thought that one was super fun, um, but then like you know there was like the, the newer cleaner ones where it was like the just the giant fucking cleaners coming out. You just had to shoot the shit at them and run away because their flamethrowers can shoot a mile away. You know, so like I don't know. This is this is the first. This is an eight. This is an actual raid. Eight eight people. You're going in. You better have some different skill sets. You can't just all expect to be like shoot them up and good. Like you gotta, be, you gotta have like some kind of support. Someone that's kind of tanky. Like you gotta, you gotta prepare. The thing I think they kind of fucked up on was they love touting this whole like uh, matchmaking for everything thing, and they don't have matchmaking on the new raid. Yeah, that that's kind of bullshit. And also that they also need more gear sets. Like need they need more to focus. Ge- not even just gear sets, just more gear in general. They just need to focus on some sort of utility stuff because, like, Dude, there's yeah. a lot of things that need heavy. I mean, I haven't played it myself, but I've like just browsing the Reddit and everyone's saying that like healing is a big problem. It's like there's no yeah. way to be a healer in that game. So. Huge. I so I started I started grinding that uh, the skill build gear set. Mm-hmm. Uh, I forgot the name of it. I started grinding for it, and then I was just like, "Why am I doing this? This gear set is fucking garbage. I could pro- I I can get more healing out of just getting fucking gold items." Yeah, you know. <laughs> So I mean, I, I hopefully they fix that because I, I I could tell what they wanted. I don't think they necessarily wanted to make the game more casual. I just think they wanted to, they they wanted to take out some of the complexity that was in the division one because there was like a million builds you could do a million different things. Blah blah blah. But that's what's interesting about that's it. That's what's what gay people exactly. the the exactly. drive and desire. So they had like what twelve or fifteen different gear sets that people can mix and match mm. and do th- they all had different things like one was a sharpshooter was a crit build one was a healer build yeah. one was a pure dps but it was like a glass cannon kind of thing so it was like it was interesting it was fun but like even and even then, some of the the dps builds like for instance the sentry build was also kind of a utility build because it it marked enemies they took extra damage so like most of the time the sentry dudes you'd have someone with sentry just so everyone could do extra damage on that enemy so like Shit like that was like cool. Like it was, it was fun. It was like interesting idea. Ah, fuck. Let's put my elbow on the chair. It's, like, it's such an awkward. Everything is so awkward. It was, sleeping was so hard last night. But there was just fun. There was fun, di- like different things to do. I and hopefully they'll figure it out. And that's the problem. I want to. It's harsh. It's it's hard to defend. It's hard to defend them and just say hopefully they'll figure it out. They should have already figured it out. Yeah. And that's where I find myself. Is. Uh, me saying, "Oh, don't worry, guys, it'll be okay," and then someone saying, "Well, it should have been okay already," which I don't disagree with. I don't like they have R and D, they have beta testing, they have playtime before. Like, I, I yeah. it is hard, but like stuff like that, I'm not into. Like, maybe like raid stuff, sure, but like, yo, you should have known your game is based on getting items and building shit. Like, what? Why don't we have it? But yeah, I don't know. Ho- hopefully, I'm I'm still hopeful. You know, the division one turned around for the better after like a little bit. So, um, and may, you know, again, maybe that's just an impatient thing. Maybe, maybe like I want there to be a lot more builds. I mean, shit, there weren't any builds in the, the division one when it first came out. You just got whatever you got and you hope th- that you it fucking worked. You know, it's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, it was very much, <laughs> you know, what I mean? it was very much a, like, yeah, exactly. It's like very much like, okay, I'm gonna run this, this, uh, one 
this you know the uh, Russian consulate to get like this chess piece that maybe that might drop that somebody happened to find or something right. like that. You know, like if you got like, a if you got a gold drop, you were like, oh. You're like, oh fuck, what the hell is this? This <laughs> yeah. is great. He's like, I remember no having pee. all purple and I was like, oh, this is great. I'm gonna fucking kill everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's funny. yeah so i mean if you have a looter shooter and you don't focus on loot i mean that's the What's whole the yeah that's i mean that was anthem's downfall it's like nobody's oh, playing that anymore because of all of that so <laughs> yeah i think i'll pick it up if it ever goes on sale for like ten dollars and just play it i don't think i don't think them. even if you gave me that game i don't think i would i, I just don't i know i it's not i'm not like trying to shit on it i just have so little care of to play it i don't i, it's, I don't think it's like even i don't know man a game like Anthem is kind of where I draw the line on giving a studio a chance. Like, yo, guys, come on. Like, what? That was a blunder. But we all know. It's like yeah. been, been there, done that. Um, real quick, before we get into some fun stuff, I do want to talk about a game I've been playing lately that I am okay. so surprised by how much fun it is. I've been playing Magic the Gathering Arena. Oh, God. So here, okay, hear me out. I, so right. for those of you, those of you don't those of you don't know. I used to be very into Magic. I had some really nice competitive standard decks back when, if if you if you do know Magic, back when Kanza Tarkir was big, uh, Abzan mid range, uh, Esper Control, blah, blah, really fun shit. I loved it. And then once all the cons block rotated out, I stopped playing because you know, that was like over like a thousand dollars of cards that were just now pennies. Um, but I didn't know they had this Magic Arena, which is like almost like Hearthstone. They have Magic the Gathering online. I always thought it looked too boring and dull. It was just like gray background, like super boring. Then they made Magic Arena, I guess not too long ago. It's, I don't know if it's still in beta or what, but it's way more Hearthstone. It's like animation, sound bites. The cards do fun stuff sometimes. Like it's awesome. And I'm fucking hooked again. God damn it. I already this bought is on like, some paper. iOS? Like, uh no, this is just this is just desktop. You can't. It's not even on Mac. Oh, it's desktop. It's only okay. desktop. Yeah, it's only PC. I bet you at some point they'll probably do both Mac and mobile. But uh, you could. It, you I. It kind of sucks. I, I wanted to get on my work computer, but like I said, it's only desktop. <laughs> it's only PC. Um, but uh, dude, it's been so much fun, man. And it's like super catered. Like there's like a lot of intro stuff if you don't know how to play. Getting booster pack, and you can't buy singles. That's another cool thing. You could buy booster boxes for like a hundred bucks and get like you know a million packs, but you're only cracking packs to make decks. Unless like oh, so, it's like the original RNG, yeah, Magic the Gathering RNG in its original state from yeah, like, booster it, packs. It, it is super Great. RNG. I mean, a lot of people like will buy like there's like some whales in that community too. Like you just buy a bunch of booster boxes and you'll get the fucking cards you need. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but it's super fun, and like I don't have very crazy decks. I have like a red white aggro, and I have like a blue black control, and you know I get stomped a lot. But whatever, I'm, I'm playing Magic again, and it's fun. It's super fun. It makes me want to play in person. Uh, there is a local shop in Brooklyn called the Twenty Sided Store. I used to play there all the time. They do still like they still like do like sealed events and drafts and stuff. So I, I might go back and play at some point. But yeah, man, it's been fun. I, I I feel like lately the games I've been playing are games I've been playing out of habit either division or destiny or apex it's just they're there i have them i hop into them whether whether it's fun or not but magic has been almost like a nostalgic fun for me you know what i'm saying i feel like it's, it's like if i picked up like zelda right now or something it's like mm -hmm. it, it caters to me on a fun on a funner level than like not it's not competitive it, it, i know people do take it competitively obviously but for me it's just been a fun little deal yeah, that's why I just want to go off on that. It's just something that I've been having fun with lately, and just want to share that. If anyone, anyone has played Magic before and they want to get back in, or they don't want to spend money or go to the, sh the shop or anything, Magic Arena is a super fun. For it's free too, mind you. Uh, think game to play. Yeah. All right, maybe I'll give it a try. I used to play Magic back in the day. Like I used to have. Yeah, man, you should do um, it. Um, we could play you know, together. I'll give it a it's, go. It's super fun. Yeah. All right, I'll give it a go. You have to send me a link later so I can check it out. So. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that'll be that'll be a, a good thing. Oh, and I wanted to follow up just because I uh, just totally realized I'd said the, exactly the wrong thing. Uh, Luke Cage is in the Blitz store. Yeah, Blitz store. And, uh, and Daredevil is in the Arena store. And those are the two people you should be focusing on to really get your. Oh uh, yeah, I buy that. Up. I buy that shit. So, but anyway, so new things coming out. So did you see? Well, I guess we'll just start with the the big thing of the week that we, you know, the past week or so, uh, is the PS4 state of play, or the PlayStation state of play. So a lot of cool stuff came out with a, 
PlayStation State of Play, the biggest notable thing is they finally dropped the trailer for the Final Fantasy VII Remake. What a, and, <coughs> what a crazy that, time to drop that out. What a, what a time to be alive, too, because, right? you know, the, the Final Fantasy VII is arguably probably one of the more successful Final Fantasies. Oh, easily. And probably yeah, the touted, like, like it, it essentially made Sony competitive, I think, you know. I, 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 think, that's, in, I think that's fair. It was, a, it was a PlayStation 1 is that came out on uh, PS1, something like that. And for me, that's what got me really into gaming and RPGs in general. It's just loving that game. And despite other people not liking Final Fantasy VIII, I really liked Final Fantasy VIII I quite thought, a lot. I thought 7 through 10 were fun. I actually enjoy Final Fantasy X quite a bit, too. Um, which is actually, Final Fantasy X was the only Final Fantasy I ever played on my own. I always played Final Fantasies with a friend. Like, we would just switch off and shit. Uh, mm-hmm. Billy Capsis, haven't talked to you in probably like a decade. Hope you're doing well wherever the <laughs> fuck you are. Um, but yeah, I would always just play with him. He was a big, he was big in the Final Fantasy. When I got PlayStation Two, he didn't have it, so he came over. He bought ten, and we played ten. But uh, I would definitely say Final Fantasy Seven. That's that's a good, that's a good, uh, that's definitely a good, uh, accurate saying there. That that made them kind of more competitive in the gaming market. Yeah, so there's still no timeline on when it's going to come out, but man, I tell you what, the, the graphics. Man, on this man game I tell you what, <laughs> it is, it is phenomenal, and I'm super looking forward to dropping another hundred hours in this game. So like, I have a lot of games. I have a lot of games to play right now. So it's like, which do really you have, have a list right now? What's your, are you like Ari, Ari's list? What's, what's your I, Ari's I, list? I do. We'll get into we'll get into that section of the what we're playing right now oh, okay. section um, when we're said and done but yeah so i mean it look it looks good uh next up for the state of play is the monster hunter world iceborne dlc yeah, i'm not a monster cool. hunter world yeah did, i'm not a monster hunter person mm, i did watch the trailer it looks pretty rad I'm, I'm not somebody who plays uh Same. those games whatsoever um but it for if you're into that kind of thing it and it I'm the like same way. Why cool. do you think that is? I don't. Uh, there's something about Monster Hunter that just doesn't tickle it for me. What What do you feel? <sighs> for I don't know. For like my thing about it is th- that world or that game is heavily built around crafting, and like you're running around and like you're fighting these big massive boss battles, and you're fighting. You know, you're crafting. You're like finding these like, little dinosaurs or other sure. animals, and like crafting bones and getting these big ass weapons. And your weapon skills have different abilities and such and that's cool and such but i don't know for me it just it just doesn't scratch the itch for me yeah like it just I, it i'm just not a feels, crafter either it feels too grindy yeah i think maybe is the is the thing and i say that and then you know the division there's that but like the division is its own separate way of grinding yes. as opposed to monster hunter so yeah but i don't know i I've, I've played a lot of monster hunters in the in the past like i'm on, on 3ds and on on my vita right. Um, but I just, I don't know. I'm just not really into it. So I don't yeah, know, maybe, maybe if it ever you. comes out on sale, I'll give it a try. Like if it's like a $20, um, on the PlayStation store, I'll definitely, you know, give it a yeah. go and see what happens with it. So it would be cool and with that. Are there's you there's two monster hunters, right? There's one for switch, one for everything else. I think it's the same. It's monster or no, Hunter World. no, there's one for consoles. No, there, I think there's monster hunter. There's so many monster hunters. So there's two just, that just... are out right now though. And there, there are different games. I can't remember. The, I can't remember the difference. One's like, yeah, I don't know. It doesn't matter. But I, I'm pretty sure like one is for 3ds maybe, and then the rest is for consoles. But whatever. Yeah, I actually do think that trailer looked kind of cool. I think of trailers that goes recon trailer look fucking dope too. It looks dope. Breakpoint. So, if, so uh, the new Ghost Recon Breakpoint is coming, and if you've never played Ghost Recon Wildlands, I I that I played it briefly. Uh, I think I. I think I bought it on like a sale for like it was like fifteen dollars or something like that, or it was, it was twenty dollars and I had a five dollar credit. So I was like, sure, I'll right. play this. I like I like Ubisoft. I'll give them money. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's you know it's an open world kind of like you know your just classic Ubisoft running around doing stuff. But the thing that I liked about Ghost Recon Wildlands is it's it's very much like the division in terms of like you have you know you're doing damage numbers and all that sort of stuff, but the headshots are one hit kill. So if you're able like, to no matter get what. like no matter what, even on a boss, if you're able to get those headshots, oh, wow. you can like just wreck things. So I thought that was a very interesting mechanic. So it kind of alleviates the bullet sponge thing, Isn't which kind cool? of makes you, yeah. which kind of forces you to you know aim for headshots and everything. Right, right. So, uh, yeah, John uh, Bernthal was in that trailer too. That was that was a that was a dope trailer. That was like cinematically was. well done. 
Yeah, they just need it's it, it's uh, somebody on Reddit had posted that you know I'm glad that the guy from uh, Medal of Honor is able to get a job again. <laughs> it looks like the same guy on the on the cover of Medal of Honor. Yeah, so, that's funny. <laughs> but uh, that looks that looks rad. I I don't know if I'm gonna play that, but I definitely it'll I'll keep it out, keep my eye out for that, and take a yeah, look. Yeah, those, I'll those watch games are like Ghost Recon games are. I feel like their own genre almost of shooter games, right? I mean. They're so solidified well, as being like a thing. Like, dude, Ghost Recon's been out since like what? Fucking Dreamcast. Like, yeah, I mean, it's it's like uh, it is great. I mean, I do like those games, but it's just a matter of like you said, it's 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 its own thing. It's very tactical, you know. It's still very, Tom Clancy. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. So, and I do like I do like me some Tom Clancy. So. I think so. Yeah, I think I think I like Tom Clancy. <laughs> just a little. Cell. Oh my god. Just a little bit. Oh my god. No, that's. People's reaction to this was saying like, you know, why don't we have a new Splinter Cell and so on and so forth. So I, yo, I like would I, play honestly. I play the fuck out of a new Splinter Cell. I would too. I would play I the think fuck out of a new Splinter Cell. I think it's a good time for Ubisoft to kind of revitalize that because it's it's you know using the, the kind of the stealth mechanics within like yeah, Assassin's man. Creed cool and all that fuck. sort of and all that stuff. So. I don't oh know. yeah, that's yeah. a good point. You could probably they probably use the same kind of like coding structure there because I mean obviously Assassin's Creed's stealthy as fuck like. It can be the new ones, kind it of. It can uh, be right. <laughs> you run in the market but, screaming or just jump. Yeah, that's funny. Be, it'd be interesting. Thing. I haven't played Splinter Cell since like Splinter Cell Three. I can't. I honestly, I couldn't tell you the last time I even played a fucking Splinter Cell game. That's, that's definitely like, PlayStation Two for yeah. me. Yeah. So, uh, and then we have uh, Medieval. I don't know if or mi- Medieval, Medieval. I can't remember how you people pronounce it different ways. So, <laughs> which was a PlayStation Two game, which I played a shit ton of. I don't really remember it, but they're just doing a remaster. And uh, it looks I'm, like it's going to be a lot of fun. It's kind of, it's uh, like a cartoony, not cartoony. I don't you know. It's just like a fun game. Like it's just, it's, you know, it's kind of like an action adventure game where you're just, you're um, a knight that's been resurrected and you have to go, I forget the storyline. I really should do more research before we do these these podcasts. <laughs> but, um, it's a, definitely a beloved game. And a lot of people were interested in seeing it sure. uh, remade. And there's a lot of speculation and rumors flying around and they're finally announcing that it is coming out. So. Right. Looks pretty red. I'll probably play it. Yeah. You know, if it's like 30 bucks, I'll definitely buy it. You know, I'll spend yeah, some yeah, money yeah. on it. I'd rather spend money on that than in game offers on Marvel Strike Force. Well, so. uh, too late, buddy. Yeah, I know. Uh, and then the final game coming out is this new game called uh, Away. Have you heard of this? I've heard of it, but I, I have not checked it's, it out. It's like a, it's a survival game where you're a fucking possum. I, see, <laughs> Although, shit like that is amazing. That's amazing. It's like, it's 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 it feels very Japanese to me. I don't know why, but it's just like it's like okay, you're a possum. That's awesome. <laughs> Although it looks more like you're a sugar glider based on the the yeah, that's the funny. trailers and whatnot. And we'll put all the trailers for these games in the show notes. So if you want to check them out, you can just you know check the show notes and the description, and we'll put them all there so you can take a look at it. That's um, so funny. And then the last thing that they announced was a new a limited edition console. For PlayStation Four, I don't know about you, but I don't give a fuck about limited yeah, edition I, consoles. Yeah, agreed. I think this. I think they can be cool, and I think that you know, if you're looking to buy a PlayStation or something like that, like you, it would it makes sense. Like when they came out with a Spider-Man console, limited edition, I think that's pretty cool. But like sure. other than that, I don't, I, I don't really give a fuck. So no, I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that. Um, I, I man, I still want to get. I mean. That's the thing is I'm in this weird place where I would like to get a PlayStation, but I know they're going to come out with a new one relatively soon. Like, I'm not going to drop five hundred dollars. Yeah, I would. Like wait, I right? would. I, I would. Uh, like. I would wait. I mean, I'm gonna if they come out with a new PlayStation, you know, like a PS5 or something like that. I'm definitely gonna get a PS5. That's uh, yeah, not, I would, not I would, a question. Not, uh, yeah, yeah, I don't even know why. Why are you even saying that? What are you talking about? Of course you are. What else? You know, shit. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't buy a PlayStation right now if I were you. So, um, Fair. I mean, even if it comes out within a year, unless they have like a super crazy sale and it's like one hundred and fifty dollars or two hundred dollars for a PlayStation oh, Four. Totally. Like, yeah, I would it. do that. I would do that. I think but so. Otherwise, so otherwise, I would not spend money on that at the moment. So money, money. It, it is uh, stuff. Um, oh, I to- you know what? I totally fucking forgot about um, one game that they announced that. I didn't scroll down far enough in our Slack. They have uh, a game called Predator Hunting Grounds, kind of like, uh, which kind of has a very Friday the 13th slash, you know, Dead by Daylight feel. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like, you know, you're the predator, 
there's like one person who's a predator and there's like four other people who are like mercenaries or whatever. Oh, they got, cool. They're either surviving or hunting or anything like that. Have you ever played those games at all? Uh, Dead by Daylight, yeah. No, I, I didn't... Yes. There's a, oh, wait, no. I knew there was a Friday the 13th game. Did you, did you yeah, play it? Was I, it fun? I did. I played it when it first came out and it was it was all right. Uh, it's not my type of game whatsoever. It, <laughs> no, I feel like it's a lot of... Well, it's a lot of waiting and hiding and like being strategic and it feels like that game Evolve too. Sure. Like oh my god, Evolve. Four Hunters versus like one big ass uh, I liked monster. Evolve. I personally liked I, Evolve. I liked Evolve too and I, I like that game style of yeah. where it's like one versus four and everyone yeah. has different things. It's cool and I wish they would kind of bring, well I guess they are kind of bringing that back with this Predator thing so I don't know. We'll see. I'm Is curious to see how it looks. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I can find out. Uh, one second. Oh, it's, it's well, it's coming out for a VR game too. Um, oh, cool. Predator VR, yeah, Predator Hunting Grounds. Uh, I don't know what that is. Uh, I just see trailers here. So VR baby. But, uh, but yeah. And also speaking of VR, uh, the Oculus Quest and the Rift S are shipping now. Which you got the Oculus, didn't you? I have, well, I have a I have a Rift, an original Rift, and actually I have uh, a DK, a development kit. Right, Rift. right, right. But um, I, I, I pre-ordered a, a, a Quest. The Quest is like the standalone thing that you don't need uh, a computer for. You can just put it on, do whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, mainly because, as if you don't know, I love to play Beat Saber, and that's like what I go like, to wait, and stream. You like, you like Beat Saber? Yeah, I, I, I like I like Beat Saber. I, I never know would have guessed. If you know this. Um, it's it's fun because I love rhythm games. I love music, so it kind of like you know fits my style of games, and that's what I'm streaming most of these days because I only have you know, a couple of days off, right. literally a couple two days off, <laughs> so I don't have time to really dedicate to much to streaming just because I have so much real life stuff because I'm an adult. Yep, debatably, but the nah, hey man, you got a Tesla. You're an adult. Yeah. <laughs> Definitive but fact. The, definitive that, fact. That, 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 there you go. That's the fact. Uh, the factoid. But the so, I got the uh, so I pre-ordered the the quest because I was looking forward to that. I was going to get a go, but I, you know, I don't as much as I even though I do VR work, it's for the for Facebook and Oculus um, with streaming concerts and everything like that. I wasn't really interested in getting a go, but I wanted a quest because I knew the quest was coming out. So anyway, I ordered a quest. It comes out on Monday. I'm pretty stoked for that. I'm going to test the shit out of that. And I did pre-order a Rift S. But then I was doing a lot of, I saw a bunch of reviews on like a gadget and a bunch of user reviews and it felt like a sideways upgrade for me. Um, and I'm fine with, I have a space that I can use and utilize my sensors, even though I don't have full room scale just yet because I only have two sensors. I know. I how many, sen how many sensors do the, like, what's that about? How does that work? Uh, so the, yeah, the other two sensors, so it's like, you know, um, like, like five feet apart in front of you. So that way it's, it's tracking and whatnot, but you can put a third one behind you for full room scale. So that way you can actually like, oh. cause if you like turn around for whatever reason, like the sensors get lost or your, your wands go behind your body, you won't be able to see it <laughs> and, sure. uh, and everything like that. that but so I decided, so I was going to get that, but I decided to just cancel my pre-order because I think that. If I'm going to be serious about VR and really kind of dive into VR, I think I should really just spend up and get the Valve Index, which is their new, is which is like their new pushing the VR world forward. So, so and, a, a, real, I guess a question I have real quick though: when you do like Beat Saber, that's only with PlayStation VR, right? No, I mean I have it on PlayStation VR, but I'm when I'm streaming, I'm streaming it f in my computer. So I have like extension, like USB powered extensions, so that way I can run everything into this area over here. And I'm currently working on a way to do mixed reality, which is just a big ass fucking green screen mm -hmm. uh, in my basement here, and I can uh, you'll be able to see me full body doing the swings for the Beat Saber, which will be pretty sweet. Oh, interesting. So, um, but yeah, so I mean, there's PlayStation VR, which is what you played. But then I'm just doing Oculus. Uh, oh, when you do Beat Saber and you stream it, you're doing it through Oculus. I'm doing you're it through Oculus, You're not doing it through yeah. PlayStation. Yeah, so that's uh, mainly, mainly okay. because it's I was wondering, like, I was like, why even get all this stuff when you have to use PlayStation's headset and shit? Well, I was doing it through PlayStation, but like you're limited to the songs that they give you on the PlayStation and whatnot. Right. But what if you do it through the Rift S or through Oculus on your computer, there's a bunch of mods and custom, sa custom songs, custom sayers, yeah, a whole lot of sense. things you can do. 
Um, and the the thing that I love is the song request. Yeah, so, you know, that's a cool. That's definitely a cool thing. So, but uh, I I'm pretty stoked about this new Valve Index headset. No, that's cool. I, that's definitely cool. I I definitely waited too long to make that decision because like I made the decision like two days after they announced the pre-orders for everything and it's already been like this the pre-orders have been sold out and you can't yeah. get them so uh, that but I, the, it's it's going to be I, I felt like i if i'm going to continue being serious about vr i should yeah. i should continue to get the latest greatest and i'm not excited about the price point because it's a thousand dollars for a fucking headset whoa it's it five hundred dollars for the well. It's five hundred dollars for the headset itself, and it's five hundred dollars for like you know the knuckles and the the lighthouses and also for a full setup. It's it's so what full so like for those that don't know, which including me, uh, why is this one better than like other VR stuff you currently have or that could be coming out? Like why why uh, cancel your pre- why do that? Why do this? What makes this well, one so good? It's the Val, like the HTC Vive has been great at, it's arguably the best in terms of room scale, which means like you can walk around the room and it right. attracts you, you know, one for one. Sure. As well as having, you know, this new thing uh, with the Rift S, like you don't need sensors, so it has cameras on the outside and you can look through. I mean, this new Valve Index has cameras. Oh, and you can also do that's that kind of cool. But it allows you to, um, the thing about this that, that I really like is, you know, it's higher quality screen. The Rift S has only has a, a refresh rate, I think, uh, set, uh, 80 hertz or 70 hertz, something lower than what it is now. I think 90 is what it is now. But the index has a refresh rate of 144 hertz. It has dual 1440 by 1600 LCD screens, which I think is the same as the Vive. Uh, and it has a, has a 20 degree wider field of view than HTC Vive with better uh, sub mapping of pixels. That's so, cool, man. Fuck. It's it it's gonna it's in order to it it really is pushing the the VR qual the VR headset world the VR world essentially and what's forward the price point in like terms a of Vive? hardware. A Vive is yeah you can get one for like I think it's six hundred dollars yeah something like that so right, I mean right. it's not it's not cheap by yeah, any means cheap, but yeah, yeah it's it's you know it's it's a luxury absolutely is a luxury so but it's um I don't know. It's pretty cool. They have the thing with the the new knuckles, which is what they're calling like the handset that mm-hmm. does individual finger tracking. That's so awesome. So you can actually use your fingers as you would in a game. So which is getting closer to completely Real life. immersive reality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I think. And just to go back when we had Casino on and we were talking about spending money on video games, like you know, people who spend money on like Marvel Strike Force, whatever. And in for this instance, like you know, you spending like a thousand dollars on this VR thing, it's like. You're 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 spending money on the hobby and the thing you love. So like, who fucking cares? You know, you like the game, you like VR. Just you know, you fucking do it, baby. Whatever makes you happy. Yeah. We are well, here and also for a it's short a, amount of time. It's a, I'm getting it's a business right expense too. It's business expense. Fuck you. Well, I mean, it <laughs> everything is. I mean, brings I a business work. expense, motherfucker. Uh, that's that's you're not wrong. But I mean, since I do work in VR and I have to test this out and I have mm-hmm. to shoot, I shoot in VR and all that stuff, it's uh, I, I love kind of how I, I justify you. it. That's how it's Oh, justified. yeah, justify so. it, man. Whatever you need, baby. Whatever so. you need. Um, Pretty funny. Before we get out of the Sony talks, which I think that was that was it, or I do want to talk about, did you see this deal between Sony and Microsoft? I did not. Oh, oh, Charlie, I can't even talk to you about it. I'm just going to read you the headline from USA Today. Microsoft and Sony team up for video games in the cloud, but what does it mean for gamers? So essentially, they're just... Um, co they're like so this doesn't mean immediately we're getting uh cross platform but it, it means that they are both working together to make sure their cloud based services match up better for the game so they're they're taking it out of the game's hands to make sure their games are working on both on all platforms and they're working together to make sure that games work on their platforms so it's it's less pressure on the the developers and and make it easier on them but what the bigger picture here is that they're fucking working together, which they are, they are not very known to have done in the past. Yeah. Um, and I, 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 it's, it's, I don't know. I just, the more I, we see little stories like this, the more I'm seeing in the like future billboards, full cross platform. You know what I mean? The fact yeah, that they're working together like to upgrade their, to, to, to co individually upgrade their, their cloud based gaming services. I think is a, a pretty big deal. I think it's a pretty big fucking deal. Um, 
Here, here's an interesting line. Sony needed an infrastructure partner to remain competitive as cloud gaming and cloud services start to gain traction. Um, especially since Microsoft is kind of moving more towards that. Like, you know, they just had that $250 uh, Xbox One S that came out. No Blu-ray, one terabyte. Uh, the sad. The sad. Damn, why they Xbox One that? X sad. Why they have to do that? Um, but yeah, so Microsoft has another quote. Microsoft has deep expertise in relation to game services deployment in Azure and is building out its own cloud gaming service in Azure. It is likely this will have an impact on Sony's thinking when deciding on a partner. So it's, it's pretty interesting. Um, right now, it doesn't mean too much, but I think I think it, it holds pretty big future uh, implications. Um, I I, I kind of I don't want games to be completely cloud based. I feel like that's gonna ha- that's gonna happen eventually. We I I I, yeah. I I don't see how disc gaming will survive in a decade. I really don't. I like getting like the steel book shit. I like getting uh, uh, um, legendary uh, uh, collectors editions, items, and collectors all editions, and all yeah. that shit. I, I'm sure they'll figure out some ways to milk us for money with, without without there being a game disc in regards to collectors and legendary and, and all that shit. Uh, I just think this is very exciting because it has been for quite a bit that they have not talked and that it, w- it was not a very like cohesive, uh, competitive uh, thing with them. It was always very just them and them and them. But I think this is a big step and I think... I think it's inevitable. I think it's inevitable inevitable that we'll have cross platform stuff. I really do. I don't think Yeah, I mean it's it's only better for the the, the consumers, you know, the gamers. Cuz it's not I think like it's the best. you're going to open cross platform and an Xbox user going to go fuck this Xbox, I'm going to get a PlayStation now. Like no like people are going to like the consoles that they like. That's just all there is to it. Yeah, I it like the controller people... for Xbox, you know what I mean? It's like that's just all there is to it. Yeah, I mean, I don't like the controller for Xbox, so that's exactly. what it is. Like that's just me. So it's like that's that's great if if we, if you and I can play together, like if we were able to play the division together on huge. our same consoles, awesome. but then you have you have your group of friends, I have my group of friends, it would yeah. be great. And it, it's like that just allows us to have a better experience overall. And honestly, if if that was the case, uh, I would probably buy more video games even if I wasn't able to play them. So. Right though, you like yeah, one hundred percent, like one hundred percent. And uh, you know, it, it's only a matter of time. It'll fucking happen. It has to. I think. I think you know you got to give a big shout to Fortnite for kind of like really blasting this out there because I feel like that was where it, it. I mean, it did start pretty big in regards to Rocket League, but then Fortnite was like the more played yeah. game that people were like, "Oh, I want to play with my PlayStation friends, I want to play with my Xbox friends, whatever." You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I I, th- I think it's coming. It's fucking coming. So I'm excited. That's gonna be that's gonna be super dope if that ever ever happens. So <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll see. Uh, yeah speaking speaking of things that would never that i never expected to happen uh and i didn't realize i i know this has been news for a while but i didn't realize it until it's um it's on our doorstep essentially but uh there's uh the world of warcraft classic is coming out oh yeah 26 yeah they've been talking about this for a while it's it's interesting that you know it's funny world of warcraft oh my god why can't i fucking what is wrong with me world of warcraft classic uh, has a release date, but the the remake of Warcraft Three still doesn't, which is kind of weird. But yeah, I I don't know if I'll get WoW Classic. I I'm kind of done with like traditional MMOs. It's too much for me. If it's cheap, I think maybe I'll do it. Uh, I'm uh, personally Blizzard wise, I'm more excited for the remake of Warcraft Three. I think Warcraft Three yeah. is one of the best computer games ever made. Uh, I love the Warcraft franchise. But it's cool they're doing this. This is definitely, I don't want to say it's a money grab, but like there's a lot of people that miss OG WoW. A lot of people. Mm-hmm. I mean, I haven't played since Burning Crusade. So, and I think that's where it's cutting off, right? That's the No, th- this OG. is cutting off. This is just no expansions. This is just WoW. Oh. Yeah, that's, that's, I'm almost positive. I think this article says it. I'm almost positive. Uh,. That that's interesting because I that's where yeah so I, as expected I play the shit out of it a quote from uh, this Engadget uh, article as expected the game is a touched up version of the original massive massively multiplayer game in the most refined form around the Drums of War update oh when did when was Drums of War from August two thousand six oh no that means no world altering expansions or other major game mechanics have appeared since then 
while you'll lose some of the creature comforts of up to date WoW, you also lose some of the complexity. Um, so yeah, I mean, I don't. I think World of Warcraft was probably. I mean, argu- it's not arguable. It was the best MMO ever made. I think. Um, mm-hmm. But I'm just kind of over that that traditional MMO MMO like game style. It's just not really. It's not for me anymore. I think looter shooters are a more not a more casual MMO, but they're easier for like people like us who have like no fucking time to do things. Even though they're still hard, don't get me wrong, they're still a fucking grind there. But like yo, traditional MMOs, like that's a, a whole nother beast. No, ain't nobody yeah, got time no, for that anymore. Ain't nobody got time for that. Hey, exactly. But it's so fucking yeah, cool yeah. they're doing it though. That, that's all you gotta do. Like you just gotta make shit. You just gotta make make games, make expansions, make. Just, just put shit out. People will play it, especially Blizzard. Even though people are still upset with them for whatever, <clears throat> whatever monstrosities they've done, but I don't know. If they, if they have a free trial, I'd probably do it. I'll tell you that. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I know they have a free trial up to like level seventy or something like that right now. What you can play, but like, right, but for classic, I went. Though. Yeah, well, yeah, for classic, but I like I went back and tried it, and man, dude, it's whew, it does not age well. <laughs> It's just, it's uh, it still reminds me of like I mean I can probably still play it on my 2010 MacBook Pro, but uh, it's just very, it's 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 t- it's tough to watch and look right. at. So, but even even still, it's like I don't know, I might, I would say I would be interested in playing it, but I probably won't play it. I already have too many games to play. So speaking of too many games to play, that's going to be our new segment that we're going to be talking about. And so are the games that we are playing. So it's the too many games. I need to redo that. So it's like too many cooks, too many games, <laughs> too many games, too many games. Don't you dare. Too many games, oh, too no. many games. I'll get JT to do it for me. It'd be great. Get him on Cameo. If y'all don't know, there's a new service called Cameo out where you can get um, like either influencers or celebrities. You could pay them a, a, some small amount of money, some not small amount of money to give you a, a video shout out in JT, our buddy, had him on the podcast. Um, uh, music dude uh, has since gotten on Cameo. Did you see that? Mm-mm. He'll give you, he'll give you a shout out for, I don't know how much he is, but dude, there's like, literally, I, I, I went through the whole list of people that were on there. There's some like, obviously some super big people and then some super niche people and some super small people who should not be charging the price that they're charging. Uh, Paul, like Pauly Shore, I think was like 150 bucks. Gilbert Godfrey was like 100 bucks. I almost sent my mom a fucking uh, Happy Mother's Day video shout out from Gilbert Godfrey. <laughs> oh my god! Can you imagine? You have, that would have been. Hey Teresa, been... Happy Mother's Day! It's so nice to hear from you. <laughs> that would be fucking worth it. 100 percent worth the hundred dollars. Absolutely. Right, Absolutely. Oh my god, that's hilarious. Uh... <laughs> nice uh no i did not know that he was on that i haven't even heard of that man yeah, he, does, he posted talk, on instagram the other day talk you about a too, fucking i did yeah they were in, they were playing in brooklyn at, yeah. up in greenpoint and i didn't get i got a chance to stop by and just say hi for about 15 minutes just because we had a long ass day with an 11 hour turnaround so i had to run, yeah. run back home to go to bed because that's what happens in the film industry so but uh yeah so uh speaking of too many games what are you playing Ma- i mean right now mostly magic the gathering arena it's been it's been a really fun uh like wind down like getting home from like a long day and just like honestly man flipping some cards like playing cuz you play against people online like you start like I, I didn't start playing against people until I had like two decks I thought were actually competitive competitive enough to play but like the more you level up in game via the practice mode you get they give you decks and so you get free cards essentially from the decks and then, like, I think a, 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 there's like, because there is definitely a, a an online market there. Uh, you could buy packs, and I think the starter, the intro bundle is like five bucks, and they give you like two thousand gems, which allows you to like go into um, you because you could do draft and seal like the the um, the uh, unconstructed stuff, and um, they give you like two thousand gems, some packs, some other shit. But, you know, the more you level up in game, they give you pre-made decks and they'll give you booster packs. They'll give you coins, which with coins, you could buy individual booster packs. Um, I, I, I got all these like pre-made decks. I got some booster packs and I, I made two decks that are actually like pretty good. Like I said, a, a white, white, red aggro and a blue, black control. And uh, it's really fun because I, I don't lose anything if I lose. I just I can just hop back in another game. Like it's not like 
Magic, if I go play at the store, I'm going to pay $10 to either do standard or like whatever for draft or sealed. And if I lose, like, yeah, sure, I'll get like a booster pack. But they do have those events, which is really fun. They do have like, like many events in the game where you could like pay with, with gems, which you do have to buy gems. Um, pay with gems and you could do like best of three for either like standard like constructed standard or like draft or sealed and if you for those you don't know draft is when um everyone at the table i think i don't know if it's eight whatever the max people is i don't remember please forgive me everyone gets a booster pack everyone opens their pack they'll take a card from it and then rotate it counterclockwise so you get the person to your left you get their pack take a card from it hand it to your right and then just keep doing it until you build a 40 card deck super fun it's very strategic some people obviously will get like they'll crack some like super good shit and just keep it like not even for the deck but like what are you gonna do that's just the name of the game um mm -hmm. also uh there's sealed which you get six booster packs i think or maybe eight also and then you just build a 40 card deck out of that like whatever you whatever you got in that that works you just build a deck um so that that's that's the that's like the normal events you play at a magic store or you could do it on arena i just love arena man because i know i know we uh, people have had those hearthstone already i'm not like trying to say like magic arena over hearthstone i don't give a shit about that but there's really cool animations there's really cool like voice acting like every planeswalker has a voice actor it's so like you throw down like a johnny and he has like this like really cool voice acting like oh i've come to save whatever like it doesn't matter like uh, it's just cool, and like you know, you'll do like a burn card, like you'll you'll, you'll throw it down, throw it on a lightning strike, and like you'll get like a fireball throws at your at your opponent. It's just it's just cool. It, it's a nice, it's it's like a nice. Uh, I've been wanting this to be honest. I, my my hope for Magic at some point, and I guess for card games, competitive card games in general, is I want there to be like a holographic table in front of you, and I want this, but in real life, I want to like throw down a card and you see like a hologram fireball throw out. You know what I mean? Like I think I yeah, think that's the future. I think at some point that can happen. Like I have that on my computer right now, but I want to go to a store and fucking do that. Like that would be wild, you know. Um, but yeah, that, and then also I joined the new guild thanks to you, a new alliance rather, uh, in Marvel Strike Force. Big shout out to my boys MCU. Uh, they've been like helping me in Marvel Strike Force. You know, because they're all level 70 big boys, like, uh, top 1,500 in regards to, like, competitiveness in, in the Marvel Strike Force world. Um, you know, they're fucking, we're slaying wars, slaying it in uh, raids, so I'm just getting a lot more materials than I would have. So that's really nice to just, like, really beef up my, my characters faster than I was, because that's just mm -hmm. slow as fuck, you know. But yeah, that's it for me. Uh, arena in fucking uh I've, I've been playing apex still but that's like when i fucking have nothing to do i'll hop in apex i'm like kind of done yeah. with division right now in destiny until like something changes i'm, I'm just... yeah i can i can understand that i have uh i'm in the same boat with the division i really want to get into it and play but like i feel like i really need to beef up my my build a little bit more to do to be able to be competitive in my clan so uh, it's I, just it's been yeah man it's, been it's just there's i, I don't even even with that, like to beef up your build, like what are you fucking gonna be? What are you going for? Like what do you? There's nothing to go for. Like there's like two builds you could do that are fucking actually like good. I don't want to do either of them. Like yeah, sure. Like you know, Marco, God, God fucking bless him. Posts a video like every week. Like oh, here's a cool new build I found. But like none of them are fucking like, actually like. Yeah, but then you have to play like hours on end and get the right drops and everything like that. It's almost impossible. Yeah, if you're to, lucky like, to get the right drops that have like the right stuff on them, you know. Yeah, that's that's the annoying part. It's a little too uh, RNG for me right now, but that's well, fine because like I don't mind they're, RNG. They're catering towards the heart. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I don't mind RNG either. But like, I need to be able to like if I get a drop that I want, I need to be able to like calibrate it the way I want to. Right, calibration is a fucking mess right now. Like. They, you could like if for instance if those of you don't know calibration is when you bring it to a tape like a gun or an armor and you could change an individual stat on it in division one it was awesome because you could change a stat and you would have a list of like 20 different stats you could change it to and it wasn't it wasn't gridlocked into anything specific except for it was in like a, a certain family like i couldn't change like health on kill to dam attack damage i gotta change it to whatever is in the health on kill family which you have like more experience or more shit like that but i could change like skill power if i wanted to to defense or attack because that was in the family of like 
I don't know, primary attributes, whatever, you know. But now, in Division Two, if you re if you recalibrate an item, it can only be within that specific uh, family of like, for instance, if it's red for attack, you can only change it to other red things. So like, attack damage could change a crit or crit chance or or fucking whatever. Like blue for for defensive, like health could change to armor, or it could change to fucking uh, resistance yeah. or whatever. And like yellow, which is skills, skill power could change to skill haste or whatever. So it's not like you don't have the freedom to go from skill power to fucking damage or from defense to skill power or whatever. Which is kind of a bummer because now it, you rely on RNG so much more because you want those those drops to have the specific attributes you want. And it's not like in Division 1 2 where you know that you can go to like the alley fucking down on 32nd Street and kill the world boss that spawns there. You know you're going to get the fucking chest piece that you want. At, like you might not get it like immediately, but you know farming him will get you that. Now it's just completely RNG besides whatever you whatever quests they have that will give you shit like for instance the skill gear set. But I don't mind RNG, but just like I'll fucking grind something for like the whole day. I just want to know that I, I want to do that one place. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. 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 It definitely seems like a little bit more. Yeah. Random. It's weird. It's weird. Number I don't know. It, it, it's, it's just weird. I think, I think they just, I think they came off of the success of the end of division one and they are just, they need to find their rhythm and I, you know, fuck it. I'll, I'll stay there with them. I might not play it now, but I'll fucking play it again if they fix it, you know? Yeah. So, I feel you on that. Uh, so for what I'm playing at the moment is I too am still playing Marvel Strike Force. I'm working on my power armor build. So because I was talking with Casino this week and he was like after he saw uh, he posted his power armor like um, offensive war. Dude, that video was thing. wild. It's fucking great, dude. I just um, who fucking I, knew? <laughs> who knew? I mean, it's it's all because they change rescues uh, ultimate for right. two turn on uh, on turn two, right. and like I did it, like I was able to unlock rescue. Uh, I had some power cores saved up. Uh, I bought one offer for twenty bucks to get her, and she's only two star, but she that's all I need her to do is do her right, offense. Right, man, up and that die. AOE that's shit it. is insane. Yeah, and since I have a six star, a six red star Falcon, it's uh, it's <laughs> I decided to go for it because I, it, I also have a, a fucking big big red star Falcon. That's hilarious. They're probably so, like, oh, he like, sucks. Let's give people stars, and then it's like, oh wait, his AOE with rescue power armor is fucking great. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's 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 kind of crazy, um, but I mean, yeah. So I'm playing Marvel Strike Force. I'm still trudging through Days Gone, and I feel like I did people a disservice in recommending that game. I don't know if I would recommend <laughs> that game now. So it's uh, it's a chore. Funny. Like you know, I think I'm the. At first, it was cool. Like the the dialogue was good. Uh, I like the interaction between the characters. But now sure. that I'm f getting through it, it's just feeling disjointed. Like I feel like the writers and the director of the game just do did not take into account what happens around the game, like the storyline. So it's like there's a certain. I'm not going to spoil it for anybody just yet. Maybe in a month or two, I'll I'll talk about why I don't like the dialogue and the writing in it. But it's like there's a certain event that happens with one of the characters and like it would be super fucking depressing if that's the case. But like the next like literally the cutscene after this thing happens, like the guy who should be very upset and like not want to like live essentially in this world is like cracking jokes and being like fully he, he looks like he makes a like a full recovery even though there's like a big thing that happens to him. He's like napping like, good. Don't worry. And like this is not a hospital. Like if even if today, like if this thing were to happen to you, you'd be fucking out of it. Yeah. I don't know. It's just it's, weird. it's just taking me out of it and I at this point I just want to finish it and I'm pretty close to the platinum on it. So I'm saying sure. I'm just gonna finish it. So so but that's I have that uh I have a new Metro Exodus to play mm -hmm. as well. I got that from Gamefly. I'm very excited to, to dive into that. I might do that a little bit today after I do some Beat Saber, and then I have uh, the new Super Mario Unlimited. No, was it not Unlimited? Super Mario, the new one that came out for Switch. Oh, it's, it's like the, it's the side scroller. Super, that you're talking about? Yeah, Super you Mario. Got that? U. I mean, it's, I got it from GameFly, so I'm trying uh, that out. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. It's cool. It's fun. It's nostalgic. Oh, you know it I feels do? a little slow. Today. Yeah, uh, it feels a little slow. Like I kind of wish, like 
it was a little snappier in terms sure. of the feel of Mario, but sure. um, it just, uh, I mean, that's just my initial. I've only played like two levels, so yeah, I haven't really yeah, yeah. dived too deep into it, so maybe it gets better, but I don't know. That's fair. Just, I'm, uh, and that's speaking it. of Nintendo, I'm really excited for the fucking new Pokemon, man. I'm I'm stoked. I, they have a, the release date. I'm going to pre-order it probably after summer once we get more info on it. We have a release date at the end of the year, uh, Christmas, which they love doing. They love doing Pokemon at Christmas. It's so strategically hilarious. Uh, mm-hmm. But, uh, oh no, it's New Year's Eve. I'm sorry, it's not Christmas. But uh, I'm so fucking excited. The new Pokemon, I just can't wait. And like mad people are upset because uh, they're like, oh, the graphics still look kiddy. It's like, why aren't we getting like more adult graphics for Pokemon? It's like, yo, dude, this is still a kid's game. Go fuck yourself. But I just want that Switch feel in the Pokemon. And I, we got that a little bit with Let's Go Pikachu. Did you did you play that at all? I did not, no. You know, I mean, you're not really into Pokemon, right? No, I'm not really in that Pokemon. Yeah, I'll probably fine. play the new one when it comes <gasps> out, but... I saw Detective Pikachu. I forgot to mention. Oh, we'll talk about the push show. We'll talk about the push show. Uh, but yeah, man, I'm excited for I'm excited for the new Pokemon. The new starters look really cool. I've I, I don't think I don't care how old it ever be. I will always love Pokemon, dude. I don't know. <laughs> That's just I, I I think there's certain things you can't let go of, and I think Pokemon is that way for me. You got to be a kid sometimes, you know. It's fine. Like, for me, it's a little bit more than sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Awesome. Well, you know, we'll see. There's a lot of new stuff coming out soon, so we'll see. We, yeah, I think 2019 is going to be a fun time for gaming. I, I'm excited to see where we go. And just and just like nerd culture in general. We have a lot of cool stuff happening. Marvel Phase 4, the new Disney streaming service. We have Mandalorian coming out on uh, some point soon. I th- well, I think this year. Maybe not. Um, but a lot of cool stuff happening. And regardless of like, don't let the internet bring it down. Like, there's stuff to there's obviously there's there's healthy critiques on a lot of stuff happening, but you know, like for instance, everyone talking about like all bummed like the Game of Thrones dudes doing Star Wars, like just just fucking just live relax. life, enjoy exactly. So on that note, bam bam bam. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks all for coming out and being a part of the Overachievers Gaming Podcast. You can find us on Instagram at OG.podcast, Twitter at OverachieversP. You, our website is beanoverachiever.com, patreon.com slash overachievers. And Dom, am I missing anything else? Uh, at Vivash, at Ashley Pastrami. Yeah, and you can ask us questions on Twitter with the hashtag AskOGP. Until then, have a nice week. week. I, was, I almost said weekend, but they're not seeing it right now. Have a nice week, everybody. Bye. I saw Detective Pikachu last week with a coworker, and oh, I'm not gonna spoil anything. Here's here a couple a couple of pros and cons. Detective Pikachu, I found <laughs> on a on a on a, on a good day when I'm feeling good about myself, I would give the movie a seven. If I'm not feeling good about it, probably like a six six point five, which is still good. They made a they made a live action anime essentially, and it was fun in that regard. Some weird narrative structures. Some super cool callbacks to like OG Pokemon stuff. Would I see it again in theaters? No. Would I like if it was on streaming service? I had nothing to do. I'd probably watch it. But Talk it was like it. it was a real life Pokemon, and it was it, that what was that's what was cool. Like uh, like the way the Pokemon acted, the way they, they the CGI was very well done on them. I'm like, oh, that I I think yeah, that's how a fucking Pikachu would look if it was standing in front of me. Totally. Um, also questionable if it's a kids movie, dude. There was like some like like some spicy jokes made in there via Ryan Reynolds in the movie that I'm like, a kid wouldn't fucking get that. <laughs> like at some point homeboy main character as a justice Smith is talking to a cute girl and uh, Ryan Reynolds speaking. She was like, man, when's the last time you talked to a woman in the fucking birth canal? Like, like a kid's not going to get that joke. You know what I mean? <laughs> Uh, yeah. But it was fun. It was definitely a fun movie. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I it, it gave me the satisfaction I needed. I wasn't going in expecting like end game satisfaction, like you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, it was fun. It was fun, cute little movie, corny but fun. I, I would suggest watching it if you like Pokemon. If not, don't bother. <laughs>
I mean, I'll probably I'll see it when it comes out on a streaming service. I have no desire to go see it in theaters, but yeah, yeah like for sure. I like I like you. If it was on, I would just be like, yeah, sure, I'll yeah, watch that. Why not? I uh, I'm wait. I know it's still in theaters, but I'm fucking waiting for the announcement of some kind of Avengers like steel book collection of the of the four movies. I want that so fucking bad, Charlie. I want some kind of Avengers like Blu-ray collection. You know. Mm hmm. I just want to watch Endgame yeah. again. Yeah, I want to. Uh, Amanda and I keep saying, "Is, is Endgame out yet?" No, no. It's it's like, I feel yeah. like it's gonna be in theaters for a fucking bit, man. They're gonna milk that. I don't blame them. Obviously, I I would expect them to come out with the Blu-ray around Christmas time. That makes sense. That's that makes I mean, that's sense. what they've done in the in the past. So yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, so outside of this podcast, I've been giving a lot of thought to the MSF podcast. What and what was that? You I mentioned have, something. What was the thing that happened to Mar that would decide it for you? I, I can't. I'll tell you off off this. I can't tell you off. On, I Is can't this something this new? Do I not even? I don't even know about this. Yes, uh, I'll, I'll tell you. Okay. Um, I'll, okay. Once once okay. we're done recording, okay. I'll tell you. And then if it becomes a thing, um, obviously everyone <laughs> will know. But so I feel like we have two things we can do. And if you're still listening to this at this point, you let us know which one you think is better. So I feel like. I feel like we have the option of which I talk to you about, like, you know, it's on one hour. We have guests on. Um, it's straight MSF. Like, that's all we talk about. We just go through. We have talking points. We go through certain segments, so on and so forth. We're done. Uh, no post-show, no pre-show, no nothing else. We just kind of, like, it's an hour. It's straightforward. We're not bullshitting. Like, it's, it's it's you know, I mean, we'll bullshit to a little bit. But, like, a lot of the different MSF podcasts that I've, like, I've been listening to just kind of get a feel for how things would run. Mm -hmm. I feel like we would do very well in that because we have a very good rapport off each other. And with our, you know, with the different people whom I've already reached out to, I have about four to five different content creators who have all, all agreed to come on and be a part of it if they want mm -hmm. to. So which I think that would be very um, good for everyone just to be an interesting conversation dynamic. So, yeah, like, totally. if, like, even if it's, like, if you can't do one week or I can't do one week, like we have people to talk to. Yeah, for sure. So I think that'd be interesting. So it's, it would just be random. It's not going to be like we the what we do now. So it's like every other week we have a guest on. It would just be, you know, whenever, if ever, just different news, all that sort of stuff. And I think it would just be good, you know, because, and I think keeping it to an hour is it's enough that niche. people would. How many? Yeah, how many it is, how many it is very niche. I think there are four. Currently. There's four. There's already four Marvel Strike Force podcasts. Yeah, there's a average even, of report. I wouldn't have guessed that. There's MSF launch. Uh, there's one in Spanish, uh, and there's, I think that's it actually. Cool. Never mind. So three. I lied. So there will be four. So, but anyway, uh, we could do we could do it that way and be good. The other option, which I was thinking about this morning, is we could just make another sub segment of us, kind of like okay. how we do the OG chat. We could do the MSF chat. And do it that so that way it's still within the OGP, the Overachievers branding, mm -hmm. or whatever. That would make things a little bit more difficult in terms of people to hear it, but it also would tap into the you know our listeners who are listening to this right now. If that's the case. So anyway, if you like those either of those ideas, let us know. You can tweet at us, Overachievers P, Vash, Ashers, Drami, whatever, and let us know, or you know, send us a message on Discord if you want. Yeah. But I'm just curious about, um, I don't know, I think it'd be something worthwhile, especially since there's not a lot of people, since it's very niche, it's um, it's a good way of capitalizing, not capitalizing, it's a good, oh well, yeah, I guess a good way of capitalizing on something that not a lot of people do, and we're kind of, I'd say we're pretty decent at podcasting at this point. So. Yeah, I, I think I think something like that kind of thrives when you have some insider knowledge. Uh, I feel it, because I mean, there's only so much of the same info that someone could say. Uh, without having like obviously a twist to it, like, we have we have a twist on on us just being the two dorks we are. But I mean, I want like, could we like put a bug in the MSF uh, office? <laughs> <laughs> Hear about what they're talking about, what's coming out next? Uh, yeah, I'd be down. I like the game. I play that shit every day. I get made fun of for my daily routine for Mallory, but you know, she'll live. She's at home right now, right now, so I could say this shit without getting beat up. But until later, uh, until later, exactly. <laughs> Um, thank you for listening, honey. And I appreciate your continued support. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, fuck yeah. The game, it, it's just so, I'm still just surprised at myself that I like this game as much as I do, but they did do a good job of this game. So would I, would I yeah. be into having, uh, would I be into talking about it more? hundred percent, especially since I'm getting so close to 
not necessarily end game, but I'm being close to level 70. I finally have all of my defenders in purple gear uh, tier. So it's just, it's only up from here. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm in the same boat. I'm currently working on my Fear of the Darkness team. I have one person at gear 13, which is Minerva. I have Nick Fury uh, two pieces away from. Oh, yeah. How do you get Iron tier Man? Tier 13. Uh, Iron Man is five shield characters. Five shi- so Wait, five, like five star or shi- just five shield? Five star. They have to be five star shield. Okay, of course. In order to unlock so it. Like when, when, so, when that happens, like the Star Lord or Iron Man, and you get five five star characters, does it just automatically unlock? No. So there's an event campaign that happens oh, that you play through. Uh, oh, we have that coming up. So, yeah, that's coming up very soon. I I'm will be able to get a seven star uh, Star Lord. So, I mean, you can still, I mean, it, it lasts for like four days. Yeah. So it's not like it's just one day and over. But so you would have to essentially unlock, um, you know, you unlock every tier and the they give you enough gold to, you don't get to unlock them, but they give you enough gold to, um, or maybe it does, I don't remember. I think it is like when you get to five star, they give you enough gold to unlock him and rank him up to five stars. Right. So it's an automatic unlock to five star or something like okay. that. So, like for this, it's um, for the Star Lord event. It is, if I'm looking at it right now, for the events coming up, let's see what it says. Um, the rewards are 300 Star Lord shards, uh, 2,000 premium orbs, which is one orb. You get 50 power cores and 1 million gold. So I will get, um, it gives you enough to uh, level him up to seven stars, which is half a million gold, and then and then some. So Cool. But uh, yeah, other than that, yeah, Star Lord's uh, only one left I have for my tech team to make it like nice, dude. It's um, uh, I'm I'm excited for you to start doing the meta stuff because like it is fucking fun. Like, I agree because start... I mean like defenders are meta for defending, but not for d- anything else much. It kind of stinks that like you know they... I, I, like I want to attack in war I want to do more stuff in I mean they're okay in raid because that iron that iron fist heal every time you start up but um I want to do some fun I want to do fun arena shit I want to do some more fun blitz stuff I finally have a shield team I just don't have fury obviously um so that's having shield and blitz has been fun because I feel like they're a fun blitz thing but uh yeah I just want I want to do more fun stuff I want more fun characters I want this fucking power armor team but like I'm not spending money on that and like that's the only way no, I'll get I it would... fast and the only way that you would have fun with power armor team is to get them all level 70 or close like 65 exactly gear tier gear tier like nine or ten yeah uh, and yet. like six 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 four uh i mean i just i'm holding off on upgrading rescue now like i got her she is it's so funny i was uh, talking shit on her and falcon at first that was hilarious and i mean it are. happens man that's why it's like yeah that's that's why I've been just trying to farm people just to unlock them. I'm not trying to pay for them outright, with the exception right. of um, you know, like Minerva when it first came out. I like recognized immediately that she was going to be top tier shit. Right. And so like I pay I I spent a lot of cores getting her up there. But like um, anyway, so I'm excited for man. I am fucking excited for X Men. They're coming. Yo, I'm super yeah, stoked. That's gonna be fucking dope. Uh, do we know what like do we know what kind of characters um, they're all gonna be? So they're, they're they're announcing uh, there's gonna be Jean Grey. But I mean, what be... they do essentially, I mean, that's what I mean more so. Well, I guess I can sh- say that. Why not? Uh, I mean, it's just like I don't I don't know what I can't remember off the top of my head. Yeah, what they I'm were saying. How are. OG or OP Jean Grey is gonna be? They, I mean, they have to make her oh strong. fucking OP as hell. Yeah, I think I don't know. I guarantee you, she's gonna be the legendary character. But I don't. They haven't announced like who you have to unlock them. And so forth, but they do know that like Cyclops, uh, not Cyclops, uh, Psylocke is um, is coming, and she's going to need martial artists to unlock. Oh, so, interesting, cool. That's why I said work on your martial artists. And you can see, like, if you go to your your yeah. roster and go to filter, you see what martial artists are. And like, I will have enough to unlock her at least five. I'm trying to get her, going to try to get her to six. Oh yeah, no, I'm um, good. You have five stars. Close enough. My hand source is at four. My assassin's at four. And then Daredevil Iron Fist are at four. I could probably farm Electra. Hmm. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, fairly, I'm closer than I am for uh, Star Lord. I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's. I mean, we have some time. I think it's like the the event is in nine days. I think it's on the twenty seventh. So yeah. you have some time to work on it. So cool. I mean, I'll I'll be able to unlock her at five, 
and I'm trying like Mordo is so I have Iron Fist, Daredevil, Mordo uh, at six, and I just have to get I'm trying to get like Electra and Sentry. So, mm. but anyway, dope. Yeah, do anything fun this weekend? Just just relaxing post tattoo. <laughs> no, <laughs> taking care of taking care of my sick ass girlfriend who's getting her hair cut right now. <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah, man. How about you? Chilling. Just chilling. I mean, oh, yeah. um, get the, relax. We're man. gonna go I need, for. I need to relax. I need. I need, yeah, you, I need I mean... you to get some bath time or walk in the air. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna go. We're gonna go on a hike in about you know half an hour. Oh, so. nice. Where are you guys going? There's a little place up in Fairfield, not too far away, that Amanda mm-hmm. knows. It's just like it's um, it's a little couple trails. Or take Archie, get him tired the fuck oh, out, that's, yeah. and uh, <laughs> he, and then you know they, they also have like a little burger shop. So I'll go get nice, a burger man. on a wrap. That's awesome. Good. Enjoy. So. I love that. Hiking is fun. We did, I, yeah. I told you about when we went up to the fucking Catskills and we got iced mm-hmm. out, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm I'm looking forward to. It. I like I like being outdoors a little bit more, and I just don't feel like I have the time or the energy to do it recently. But like now yeah. that the weather is turning nicer, it, it makes me want to go out and do shit. So. Yeah, man. Good. Enjoy it. Enjoy that Archie and uh, Amanda time. You guys deserve the oh. deserved relax. Indeed. And then Game of Thrones tomorrow night, the finale. Yeah, I don't. Even, I don't know. I'm not. I'm, I'm. Here's the thing. I'm not like. I still like Game of Thrones. I've liked Game of Thrones. The last two episodes I thought were questionable narratively. I honestly would not feel as questionable about this season if they just added one or two more episodes to to really hash some things out. Yeah. Um, I don't think that the sudden turn. Well, I guess should I not say spoilers. It's Game of Thrones, right? It's not a movie. Uh, nah, I, I mean, won't it's say Game of Thrones. I won't say anything. I think we should that do an OG chat though. I think we could add to this after the finale. I wouldn't mind. I, I, I wouldn't mind at all. I, I just think that there could have been another episode or two to really to really fix some things narratively. But that's me. I, I'm not like sitting here like they have ruined the fucking show. Ugh. Like uh, relax, dude. Like come on. Like the show is still fucking good. Yeah. You just saw some crazy shit happen. It might not have been what you wanted, but also it's not your fucking show. So you know, sit down. <laughs> Actually, I'm gonna, Be read, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna read this one thing. I I, I do want to read something. Uh, the actor behind G- Grey Worm, uh, he he was on something recently. I, uh, I don't know what talk show was on. I want to read what he said in regards to because there's a petition now to redo all of fucking episode, uh, season. Uh, okay. Um, and I quote Huff Huff Post uh, interview with the dude who plays Grey Worm. Great actor, I love Grey Worm. The dude who plays him is fucking good. I think. Uh, I think it's rude, the British actor said on Friday's broadcast of ABC's uh, Strahan and Sarah. Obviously, the show feels to people like it belongs to them, he explained. That's really good. I think it's really important when people take things into their heart and it means something to them. But Anderson, whose rap star moniker is Rayleigh really Richie, I didn't even know he was a rapper, continued. However, however, it doesn't. I just mean that in the sense that I was there and the crew, in particular on our show, with the hardest room gr- working group of people I've ever met and ever had the pleasure to work with. And I think it's trivialized their work in that way. I find it quite sad. Uh, and I fucking agree. It's like, People aren't taking into consideration all the things that go into making a show, all of the things that oh, go yeah. into it, and to just shit on it in five seconds because they didn't go the way you wanted or they didn't choose to do narratively the stuff you wanted is horseshit. Like it's fucking horseshit. Uh, 